very quick video uh, introducing the Be a Scientist project to potential volunteers. Uh, my name is Matt Hinckley. I am the IB Middle Years Program Coordinator at Liberty Bell Junior Senior High School here in Winthrop. I also teach eighth grade science. Um, additional teachers on this project are Amy Fitkin and Jenny Rice, who teach seventh grade science. And our other science teacher is Katie Luthauser. She teaches ninth and some other grades as well. Um, I want to thank the Methow Valley Public School Funding Alliance for funding student materials for this project. Um, and I especially want to give a shout out to an organization in Berkeley, California, known as Community Resources for Science, who developed this project with UC Berkeley graduate students um, and professors. Finally, um, I'd like to thank you, uh, the potential volunteer who makes this project possible. Without you, there would be no Be a Scientist project. And I also want to acknowledge that I put the logo of the Mid-Columbia Science Fair on there because that is one of the goals of this project. So uh, in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about volunteering in our school district, this project, this school, our roles, that is teachers and volunteers, our students, and go through a brief week by week plan. I'm going to skip this next slide because that's designed for an in-person meeting. The Be a Scientist project has several purposes. First of all, we want our students to be motivated science students. Secondly, we want to further develop student understanding of the scientific process. That is, by doing individual science inquiry projects, each and every student develops their understanding of the scientific method relative to their own interests. We also want to provide equal access to individualized scientific investigation. As you may know, science fair projects are often done or greatly assisted by parents, and we want to move that mentorship and high-level work into the school so every kid has an equal opportunity. Lastly, you, the volunteer, the scientist mentor, give the students a great deal of personal motivation and a view into why science education is relevant in life. We'll get into that more later. So let's talk quickly about volunteering in the Methow Valley School District. Um, in order to do so, you will need to fill out and return a volunteer authorization form. Um, this is available on the school district website or in a paper copy at the front office. You need to provide a photo ID as well. Present both of these things to our uh, school secretary, Debbie Baer. Uh, she'll scan them, uh, make copies of them, um, and you will be good to go. Uh, this takes about 10 minutes, so you can complete it now coming into school, or if you arrive maybe 10 minutes early on your first day of volunteering, uh, you can get that taken care of that day. Liberty Bell Junior Senior High School um, is a grades 6 through 12 school. We have about 340 students in those grades. Um, and as you may know, uh, just like the Methow Valley at large, we have high socioeconomic diversity. We have about 60 seventh graders divided into two sections at our school. We are an international baccalaureate middle years program uh, school. Um, we've been such a school since December 2017. Um, and basically, IB schools share a common philosophy, a commitment to high quality, challenging, internationally based education. What does that mean for you, the mentor? Well, not really too much. It's just something to be aware of. Student science classes are graded uh, on four science criteria, um, and this project covers all four. Um, and those are knowing and understanding, processing and evaluating, inquiring and designing, and reflecting on the impacts of science. Uh, this is a common set of criteria or standards that all IB middle years program students are graded on across the world. In addition, our students um, learn based on the next generation science standards, which are the Washington State science standards. So here's what you, the mentor, bring to the Be a Scientist project. Number one, you bring real science experience. You are people in our community and you are role models. Um, we aim for students to understand that they can have a career in STEM um, and that those careers may not be what the stereotype of those careers that they assumed uh, that they are, maybe. We use the next generation science standards. 
These shift the focus of science education away from just content. They have revised science education to include the practice of science, asking questions, analyzing and interpreting data, and developing and using models. So here are the outcomes that we hope for our project. This is really for a lot of our students the first time that they personally and individually get agency and significant control in what they are learning, selecting a topic which opens a doorway to when they choose their own academic path in high school and beyond. This kind of lifts the veil of what is science and allows students to begin to think about career pathways and to identify themselves as scientifically literate. So let's talk about the various roles in Be a Scientist. Um, we have all of these roles supporting the students doing these independent scientific inquiry projects. We have the teachers, both in terms of leading the class and me coordinating the project, and you, the mentor. You just being you is super valuable. All kinds of anecdotes from your career, Maybe uh, you collected scientific data that failed after two years that you had to redo. Um, maybe you took a long and winding path through science education into your current or former job. All of those things are really valuable experiences for our students to hear about. So here are um, the roles of the teachers. I am the project coordinator. Um, I'm here to make everything easier for you, the mentor. Um, I provide in-class support, so when the students are doing their science projects, I will be there. I help the students develop their projects, and I will mostly supply and distribute materials to you and to the students. You can expect weekly emails, or at least on the uh, mentor weeks, uh, from me about the project. Amy and Jenny are the teachers of the students. These are both, both first block seventh grade science classes. Um, our classes are about 74, 76, something like that, minutes long. Um, so we have a good amount of time uh, for the students to do their science. Um, Amy and Jenny will be helping the students prepare for this project, um, especially in between the times that you see them. They will help the students develop their project ideas and as classroom teachers, they are responsible for classroom management. So the students themselves, these are seventh graders. They're 12 or 13 years old. As you know, they are um, social and they have high energy. Do a mental exercise for a moment. Remember what you were like at the beginning of seventh grade. What were you like in class? Did you have a science class? How did you feel about science? Um, our seventh graders are a microcosm of the Methow Valley. Uh, we have some students who have parents with doctorates and have traveled the world, um, and we have students uh, who live below the poverty line with a single parent, maybe not having traveled outside of uh, North Central Washington. This project gives every student the opportunity and every student is able to complete it. We have incredible success rate compared to traditional class assignments um, and this is all due to the buy-in from students and the ability to choose and the small groups with mentors. Um, if there are students with special needs, the teacher will provide uh, modified versions um, and we will group you uh, with the students. A um, couple of ideas for working with middle school students. Give them clear directions. Break tasks down into smaller chunks. Um, if there are unmotivated or disinterested students, try your best to figure out what they're interested in um, and how they can connect that to science. But just be aware that it has nothing to do with you. Our students are really good at working together and working as a team. So even though these are individual projects, um, they will be available to support each other. Make sure you're giving every student a, uh, an opportunity to contribute. Um, I have a handout for you to use called Nine Talk Moves that helps a teacher or mentor um, 
that kind of bring students into the conversation. We have students who are very social and want to talk a lot, and of course we have students who will dominate the, uh, dominate the conversation, and, excuse me, we will have students who are shy as well. Make sure you bring every student in. Um, in terms of student safety, a few do's and don'ts. Uh, do um, use adult staff restrooms. Those are located in the main office. Uh, this slide was originally lit, written for uh, UC Berkeley uh, students, um, so I'm not sure that appropriate dress code is going to be a problem here for our mentors. A um, couple don'ts. Uh, don't communicate directly with the students outside of school. Um, first of all, uh, our seventh graders' emails actually block external emails, so um, you really can't. If you have something to share with the student via email, or otherwise, uh, send it through the teacher. The teacher can uh, get the student to uh, that information. Um, don't touch students in any way, even to help. Um, you're welcome to initiate high fives or fist bumps, uh, but let the students come to you. And this is, of course, for the protection of the students as well as you. Um, if you are a volunteer and you have to be absent, please let us know as soon as possible. Um, we're really trying to build a relationship uh, between the mentors and the students, and they come to expect you to be there. Um, but we do have some backup people who can uh, fill in. If you know anybody who can uh, fill in for you, uh, let us know. On some of the days, you can easily uh, join us via Zoom or Google Meet um, to work with the students, and that would be fine. Um, on some of the days, such as the days when we're really doing hands-on experiments, uh, that's more difficult. So here's what to expect each week that you are here with the students. You'll get an email reminder from me. Um, I or and Amy or Jenny will be in the classroom to brief you on the day's objectives and goals. Uh, we'll provide you with a name tag and a handout about what's going on that day. Typically, each and every day looks like uh, Amy or Jenny is introducing for the first five to ten minutes of class what's happening uh, in class, and then most of the class period um, is you working with the students. Um, generally, you will review uh, at the beginning with the students uh, what are the goals of the day or the concepts that are going to be covered, um, and then the students will work on the experiments. In the last five minutes of class, Amy or Jenny will get the class back together uh, to kind of wrap things up. The image you see there, that is the cover of the student's workbook, um, and you will uh, have access to that as well. Um, we're going to do a pretty in-depth overview of each week, um, especially focusing on the first two weeks that you are with the students. Uh, here is a briefly uh, set up schedule of uh, mentor days. Again, we have two teams. We have a Tuesday team and a Thursday team. Both of these teams are here from about 8 o'clock to 9.45 in the morning. Um, and will be with the students five times uh, over the course of a few months here. Um, so let's delve in. First of all, week one, um, we're going to do mentor introductions. The first 45, maybe a little less, uh, minutes of class is going to be round robin style introduction to the mentors. So the students will come to you in groups of four to six, both the students that you will mentor as well as the students uh, from the rest of the class. Um, so you'll have about five minutes uh, to talk about your work uh, and field of study that you do or you did in uh, kind of this next generation science standards framework. Um, and what that means, you don't need to necessarily be an expert on these standards, but what that means is that um, you're talking about phenomena that you are interested in, how you uh, did or could narrow those down to testable questions, um, what kinds of hypotheses you have or had, um, and the scientific reasoning or conceptual model behind those hypotheses, um, and then the results and how you use those to continue research. You'll share about yourself and think about making these fun and interactive. Do a demonstration, bring specimens, photos, equipment, props, whatever. You can show a video, you can do a PowerPoint, you can bring uh, handouts, uh, what have you. Let's take a quick look at a two-slide introduction um, that one previous mentor had for the Be a Scientist project. Um, this was Claire. Um, she had really uh, recently, excuse me, finished a PhD um, and mentored um, 
in Be a Scientist uh, six different times. Um, this is a slide that she provided, uh, both explaining her job as a working scientist, uh, but her life outside of science as well. Um, she then went ahead and narrowed uh, what she did in her job down to phenomena, uh, the models behind it, what does she study, testable questions, what does she do? She really explained the science behind it. So think about a very, very short uh, but interesting way of introducing yourself uh, and your career, both the science that you do or you did, as well as your interests outside of your career. Then you're going to meet your students. After the introductions, uh, the students will be in their assigned groups for the project. Um, you can have icebreaker questions, get to know them, and we'll provide some icebreaker questions. Um, get to know them and their interests, and everything really has a connection to science and engineering. Um, for students that have a hard time coming up with a question, you know, an example is to ask them, oh, what are you into? Music? Movies? Sports? Um, and then you say, oh, music. There's some cool sound-related experiments. Are you more interested in how music makes you feel? We could do some psychology and music experiments. Or you could say, oh, sports? Uh, which sports? Football? Oh, cool. Did you ever have questions about football? Like, why is it important that the ball is inflated the same for every game? Or is it harder to play in the cold versus hot weather? So we can really um, connect the students' interests to uh, scientific topics. Now, um, the goal is for each student to have a general topic and a general question at the end of this first session. Not necessarily a testable question. They're going to be doing uh, some re background research over the two weeks between the first and second time you see them uh, to really develop those. So think about at the end of week one, every student has a topic. Week two. Now this is going to be the most critical week for you, the mentor, helping the students plan. As I said, they will have come up with, hopefully, a testable question, and you will be helping them think through an experimental design, developing a materials list, and coming up with a written procedure. So first of all, you're going to make sure that every single student does indeed have a testable question. Um, how does their independent variable affect their dependent variable? Um, we want the students to have measurable quantitative results. Um, most experiments should be run during class time and kept in school, although we have some limited exceptions. We will have in January two class periods for students to be doing hands-on experiments. This can be extended uh, to additional class periods as well as outside of class times. And those are going to be things for you to really use your judgment with the student on. Don't constrain them too much, but also don't be afraid to constrain their projects. Don't be afraid of big ideas. A couple of specific guidelines then. So first of all, no Mentos and Coke uh, and no quote unquote volcanoes. Uh, we basically do not like those experiments. Um, and also, uh, there's a thing that some students might want to do called elephant toothpaste, uh, and we're going to ban those as well. Every student's experiment should have a quantitative aspect. Um, think about any plant growth experiments as being somewhat limited, just in terms of the time frame involved. Although, uh, we have plants called Wisconsin fast plants that the students can grow, uh, and measure or observe within the uh, time frame provided. Um, those kinds of projects are things that the students might be coming in outside of their class time. So those plants and seeds projects may be for students who definitely have the responsible uh, aspect of their personality that they're going to take uh, care of that with. A couple other rules. Every project obviously needs to be safe, legal, practical, and ethical. Um, Fire projects are okay uh, with appropriate safety precautions. Um, and other projects involving um, other things there that you see. So live vertebrate animals, human subjects, including the student themselves or you, um, any human or animal tissue, uh, pathogenic agents, and controlled substances. So those projects basically involve uh, 
extra paperwork that the students are going to be doing five minutes probably um, those projects uh, are not to say we can't do those um, but any of them are going to require extra paperwork thinking about animals um, any project that involves either uh, invertebrates or meat that you could buy at the store those are instantly acceptable so that's a good way of uh, changing those projects uh, to be much easier to do. Human subject uh, experiments are fine, uh, but those experiments do require extra paperwork. Uh, so be thinking uh, more in terms of does the student have a good grasp of the ethics uh, involved of this project and uh, the responsibility to complete the required paperwork. Um, human or animal tissue, uh, we mentioned that. Um, those do need additional uh, paperwork, but we can get those done. Pathogenic agents, um, those sound awfully dangerous, but actually uh, that would include any kind of mold or bacteria growth. Um, and then controlled substances, hazardous chemicals. Again, these projects are not verboten, uh, but they are something that uh, we will have to guide the students through extra paperwork with. Um, a couple notes on materials. At the end of week two, um, every student uh, needs to have a materials list, and you need to get that to us. Um, anything uh, that we already have uh, is easily accessible. Um, any common school supplies are easily accessible. We have lots of uh, chemicals and general labware in addition uh, to some uh, pretty good sensors and things like that. Things that are easily available at hardware, hardware and grocery stores, Amazon, um, as well as uh, science retailers like Fisher uh, Scientific or Carolina Biological, um, or something uh, that uh, is more specialized that can be um, acquired. The biggest thing to really limit is materials that students say they are going to bring from home. That generally does not happen. Typically, a student will say, oh, I have this and my parents will let me bring it. And either they will forget or their parents simply will not let them bring that item to school. So let's limit that as much as possible. Um, we have around $25 per experiment. Some experiment to spend on student materials. Some are going to um, cost more. Some are going to cost less. Um, and so don't let budgeting be too much of a uh, constraint. Here are some examples of things that have been purchased in the past. Um, and just be thinking about being creative. Um, so we will provide you with a place to enter a materials list for your students uh, digitally. Um, and don't worry too much about the formatting here, but basically at the end of the week two session, we need to have a comprehensive list of materials so we can order those things for the students. Uh, we will then, between uh, the second time you see the students and the third time you see the students, we are going to cross-reference what we have, buy everything, order it, and organize mentor tubs. We have a few school days for that as well as winter break. We have a good amount of time because here things tend to get stuck in OMAC and a FedEx truck. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Last thing for week two is to help the students uh, get through their paperwork. Um, the biggest thing for you to do with the student is the checklist for the adult sponsor, uh, form number one. Um, and for you to help the student determine whether they need to do additional forms. That really is what this checklist does. These forms are all um, from the International Science and Engineering Fair. And getting these forms done not only provides for student safety, but it also um, aligns our experiments to international norms for uh, student safety when doing scientific research, and more importantly, gives every single student momentum toward entering their project into the Mid-Columbia Science Fair. So there are some examples of projects that will need additional forms. So uh, please help the students get just that one checklist done together with you uh, during week two. Couple things to remember at the end of week two, we need a materials list. Um, students should have a plan and the paperwork that students will be doing to get their project done 
should be known. That is to say, we should know what each student will need to do in terms of paperwork in your judgment. The next two we'll go through a little quicker. Weeks three and four, uh, these are experiment times. These are hectic, but they're fun. They're gonna go by really quickly. Wear comfortable clothing. You don't mind getting dirty. Uh, we are going to be in and out of the lab, inside, outside. Um, come to week three with a little bit of a battle plan and you'll be able to kind of think about that after week two. You know what your students' experiments are gonna be or you will at that point. So having a game plan, um, on working with the students is going to be super helpful. Um, think about who needs lots of help, who's more independent, who needs to be where, and most of all, be flexible. Week five, that's the last week that you are with the student. We'll do uh, discussion, reflection, so uh, bringing it back to a more in-depth discussion of your career as a scientist, answer their questions, help the students reflect on their experiments, really encourage them to enter their projects into the Mid-Columbia Science Fair and continue as science identified students and think about how the students will present their results. They'll give you a little bit of a round robin uh, presentation of their results and you will say uh, your thank yous and goodbyes. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, before uh, you volunteer with us week one, uh, look over the student packet, uh, plan your introductions um, that you will do with the students, and uh, in addition, uh, please make sure you get the volunteer authorization complete. Thanks for watching. Bye.